Hi, Paul Donovan here from avtechnician.ca, your channel for tips and tricks for AV technicians. Welcome back. This is part two for the Zoom events and Zoom, Zoom account training videos. And this is great. I hope you watch the part one, unless of course you don't need it. Part one is where we learned how to set up a basic account with Zoom. And if you already have your account set up, then great. Part two, we want to learn a little bit about the Zoom window. And, and we'd like to show this doing using your computer. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. That way you can follow when I put up new videos like this one. If you like this video, click thumbs up. Don't forget to leave some comments to let me know what you think about my videos. So this video is going to be primarily showing you the desktop interface of Zoom. You probably won't see my face a lot. So let's see if I can do this. I'm going to be a little challenging for me because I haven't done this live and it should be fun. So this is the settings page in Zoom. Um, I'm just going to review the ones that I think are important. Um, the first one is, remember these settings are universal for all events that you schedule from now on. Uh, any event that you already have scheduled will not be affected by the changes you do here, um, with a few exceptions. Some of these changes will take effect when that meeting might start, uh, but some of these will changes won't happen to some events that are already programmed or scheduled. All right, first thing to bear in mind is, is it is now impossible to schedule a Zoom meeting that doesn't have at least one form of security. The security can be authentication and also can be done with a passcode. Uh, the passcode has become a mandatory thing because back in 2020, we had Zoom bombers come in and grab hold of meetings and just cause trouble in the meetings. And so we had to more or less uh, find a way and Zoom found a way by forcing us to put security protocols in place. So this was this one, as you notice, it cannot be turned off. Um, if you are logged in as a, a professional user, you have a few more options. Waiting room, uh, most of the time I don't leave this turned on because I find that uh, most of my events don't need to go into waiting room. Uh, this can be turned on when you schedule an event in the case you want to uh, have a waiting room within the event. Uh, the meeting passcode, you can actually create your own passcode, um, and that is one that's required. Um, personal meeting, uh, some people use Zoom because they use it every day and they keep a single message, a single number, a meeting number that they use all the time. And this helps in a regular business environment, but oftentimes what you're doing it as an AV technician is you're doing unique events. And so oftentimes the personal meeting ID has no meaning in what you're up to. I like to leave this one in included. So the link on the, in, the, in the invitation will also have the passcode embedded in the link. This makes it easier. It just makes everything a one-click join. Um, this one here, uh, I mean, most of the time when I'm doing a meeting, I need to have my camera turned on. So generally speaking, I will turn that on generally, but I leave the participants video off. Uh, I, can, I, I can change these settings in the scheduling of an event, but since most events that I do has the host has the camera on, that's myself, uh, I have this turned on by default and I would have to turn it off. Uh, in scheduling an event if that was not relevant. Uh, you have the ability to have people phone in. If this was a, the paid for version, you would also see here the ability to have telephone call in. That would be audio only, and it'll give you a variety of phone numbers, uh, various phone numbers throughout uh, North America and other countries. Uh, people can phone in and connect up with their phones to be able to hear the event. This helps, helps a lot when some Office computer systems are locked down by IT uh, people, and so this means that they can phone in and hear it. Um, this one, mute all participants when they join a meeting, vital that you turn this one on. As you see, it is on by default. Uh, you should be sure this is on, so whenever people join up, 
uh, their uh, microphone is muted. You'd be surprised how many people pay, don't pay attention to that. They have a microphone turned on and they start talking about people and talk about stuff. Same reason why you keep the uh, the video off. Uh, they keep the video off for the distance because people hook up and automatically put their camera on and then they forget and they forget what the people are watching. Um, the chat message, uh, in most of the events I do, you have the, the restrictions. Um, you basically right now, the default setup is everyone and anyone directly. This is not a good system in, in a lot of events that I do. And so what I do is I generally have a default setting is to allow participants to chat with everyone. So what that does is it, it means that they only chat when they chat, they chat to the bulk. And so this is good when you're having Q and A sessions in your event. Um, I generally turn this one on, on, on so that the meeting things are saved. Uh, and, but it's only the host that can do that. All right. This is because the chat has a new, new variation and things that it can do. I'm not going to spend time on it. Private chat. I turn this one off. It can be turned on, uh, in, in a single, single event. You don't want participants necessarily to be talking to each other. So you turn that one on. You don't want to turn on sounds when people don't join or leave. That's a very annoying when somebody comes in because some people hook up and then hang up, hook up and then hang up. And every time they do, there's a bong, somebody's joined in with a name. Uh, this one is debatable whether you want to have it send files by meeting chat. Um, I tend to leave it on just on the off chance that that's what needs to happen. Uh, the, these ones are things that are related to Zoom. I keep them off. Zoom doesn't need to have feedback from me in a feedback survey. This one depends on, on your wishes. The bar at the bottom of the Zoom window, um, you want it to have it always there or you want it to hide. I leave it off so that it will auto hide. Okay. Screen sharing, uh, of course you want that on. That's a vital component within uh, Zoom. So you want to have that on. Um, and the choice is to, by default is one participant can share at a time. I have never ever done an event where it's been multiple participants can share at the same time. Uh, it's a bit awkward when you have multiple shares happening. Uh, in fact, they recommend to have dual monitors in case that happens. Who can share? You have host only by default. I leave that on host only. Uh, within the event itself, during inside the app, I can uh, open this up to allow all participants. It just protects people from um, grabbing hold and sharing things that shouldn't be uh, uh, available. In the paid for version, this is not blanked out. So who can start sharing when someone else is sharing? And you would probably, if, if you have all participants up here, you probably have all participants down here. All right. Um, this is not, nothing. Annotation, um, whiteboard, remote control. This one is a, a new feature that is actually being refined. Um, if somebody, if you are running a PowerPoint and the speaker is, want, you want the, the speaker wants to control the slides themselves then you want to have this turned on. So I have this turned on by default. Um, and this, this ties in with slide control uh, during a presentation. The person who is sharing can allow others to control the keynote or PowerPoint slides. So these are both the same thing. This is more of you control the desktop. This is you're controlling just the share. Um, meeting reactions, that's pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, if you boot somebody else, you want to, if you want them to be able to rejoin, uh, if you turn this one on, then, uh, when you boot somebody out, even if it's a good reason, um, then they'll be able to come back in because you didn't blacklist them. I tend to turn that one on because some people, uh, I have to boot them off for whatever reason. It's nice that they are still able to come on. You don't want to show the invitee list to the panelist panel. So I'm going to turn that one off. Uh, you want people to be able to rename themselves or for you to be able to rename them. So you want to turn these two things. So allow users to change their name and allow participants to rename themselves and allow house and, and to, and you want to turn this one on because you want to, I uh, want to have the name there. Uh, many times when I do an event, especially if I do an event from my company's account, 
uh, my host account shows the company name as the as the window. And when I do an event for somebody, I want it to, it, it to actually say the name of the event. So by being able to change the name of my, of my camera, uh, it helps a lot. Um, <clears throat> I don't usually have this one turned on, hiding participant profiles in a meeting. Profile is that little picture that I have up here. When I'm not sharing a camera, a video, this little thing shows up in my, in my Zoom window. Uh, if you don't want to see those things, you can turn this off. Uh, this is one of those defaults that affects the meeting uh, before you start a meeting. If it, you can make this change even to a scheduled meeting. You want to have this one happen, but you have to do it before the meeting starts. All right, uh, breakout rooms, a very interesting task. And uh, I like, um, I like this, this type of thing. Um, I'm going to turn all the features on. A breakout room allows your, your event for people to go into smaller breakout sessions. The, each one of them is like a mini uh, Zoom meeting. Uh, you can either send them there or they can choose to go there, whichever way you choose, decide it. Within the meeting, you can actually pre-select pre people to go to certain rooms so that when the room goes active, they people are automatically moved there or at least they're invited to move. All right. Uh, I like breakout rooms, uh, but key thing to remember is if you go into one of those breakout rooms, you're no longer visible in the main room. And if you happen to have recording happening, your rec recording follows you. And so you may want to consider uh, whether if you're recording, it's most important that you bear in mind that if you visit a room, you are the recordings following you. Um, this remote support is very similar to the one up above. All right. All right. This allows sharing multiple by enabling remote support by enabling us the option screen sharing multiple will be disabled and things will be turned off. So I'm going to turn that one on. Uh, captions. This is if you have a third party company who's doing auto, uh, captions for you. I leave this one off. It's very rare to have a third party coming in and doing captioning. Now it's very interesting lately. Uh, the automatic captions have been become more important to to a lot of people, and I have found that I'm I'm actually finding more and more people are wanting captions turned on. I know I do that when I watch Netflix and so on. Uh, notice the languages available, and the the three Asian languages, Chinese, Japanese, and Korean, are in beta mode, so that means they're still in play. But the other ones, I imagine, are pretty much like the English are. Now, this is not a translation service. This is uh, a transcription or captioning in the language that is being used. So, uh, and it also is not very good if your presenter has a heavy accent or poor audio. You, so then it gets weird. Now you don't want to save, you don't want participants to be able to save the captions, uh, mostly because uh, most people, most people don't like the way the captions mis miswrite for them. And so the idea of the captions is just to be at the moment uh, when people can say, oh yeah, that's the wrong word. It's supposed to be that. And they, they catch it on their own. You don't want to save the captions. Um, you have the ability, if you have a third party uh, sign language thing, there's a, a plugin that can do, again, very seldom I've ever had to do it. This one is if you happen to have a camera that's at the far end that you can actually remote control, I leave that off. Virtual background, everybody wants that. So you always allow it to turn on. So you have the virtual background turned on, the video filters, uh, the immersive view is quite cool, but we'll see that. The focus mode is uh, something that I leave off. Um, it's something if you want to be sure your co host and co-host videos are the only ones being seen. Uh, so it's it, you can turn it on or you can turn it off completely. I'll turn this one on and we'll see if it happens, okay? Allow host to enable focus mode when scheduling, save it. Okay. Um, the, uh, this one here, you want to leave it on, show a joint for, join from browser link. Uh, some companies have lockdowns by their administrators where people can't connect up to Zoom using an app. They either can't download and install the app or they can't operate the app. There's a link that shows up where they can actually join the meeting through the browser. Uh, 
the experience is not quite as clean as if using the app, um, but it's nice to have the option there. Uh, show always join from browser. Uh, if you don't want that to become a default, so don't, just don't take, give it to them. Uh, you don't need the disclaimer. It's not showing up right now because it's in the free version. There's no disclaimer. You want to turn on the permission to unmute. Uh, I have a lot of times I have, um, I have not had this set up on clients' accounts, but uh, if you have this set up, you can actually unmute or make the request to unmute. Uh, and so this is important. Uh, because you can't unmute a person. You can mute them, but you can't unmute them, and you have to message them. This one here is I can hit unmute, and they'll get a message giving permission to unmute. Uh, stop incoming video features. Allow meeting participants to turn off all incoming feeds on the screen. Uh, to access this, you click the view button at the top corner. So they can actually stop watching videos if they are concerned about the bandwidth and so on. Uh, if you are the kind of person who moves people around on the on the screen, then you can actually set it up to save. I have it off by default. Uh, when attendees join before the host, notify the host. I don't like all this extra notification when a meeting's canceled. I know I don't like too many emails about stuff. I by enabling this will blur. This is a, an iOS thing. Uh, and the other one down here is uh, you can assign users to be able to schedule meetings uh, and you can actually put in this but this only applies if you have more than one user or more than one license in play all right so this is just a quick review of the settings for the zoom window so i finished up my time and i think it's time for me to, to close out click to subscribe to my channel if you like this video give me a thumbs up don't forget to leave some comments. I will be adding more tips and tricks for AV technicians to this channel as I move along. Thanks for watching and have a great day.